Are you legally minimizing your future tax burden and staying compliant in today's complex tax code? If not, our sponsor, Michelou Consulting, has over 30 years of experience providing top quality professional services in accounting and tax preparation for a wide variety of clients like you. Whether you need a tax return, filing, planning, bookkeeping, financial statements, full service payroll, or a corporate or individual tax return, I personally recommend you to contact Jeffrey Ressler, CPA, at 561 237 Five two six four. That number again is five six one two three seven five two six four. And you can visit his website at jrcpa.net. That's jrcpa.net. Tell Jeff that Chad Deckard sent you from this podcast to receive his special rate for listening to this show. Thank you very much. Broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean and Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my Internet Marketing Pro podcast show. My shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, and entrepreneurism. Thank you for tuning in to my show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's cover a few quick announcements before we get started. I really appreciate you all giving me the feedback that I've been getting, what a difference it makes in motivating me to put these shows out and continually think of the next subject matter that I'd like to explore with you all. I'm also very excited about you all helping me get more subscribers by sharing my content with your social network. My weekly listener base is growing a great deal week after week, and that's the greatest payoff my listeners can do You know, for giving back to me for for my efforts and time and putting into putting this show together. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, give me a review, or subscribe to my show, most importantly. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support. Now, let me make one more announcement, and that is please be sure to check out a new resource that I've put up. It's called ezinegenerator.com. It's a free resource that will give you over-the-shoulder uh, teaching, uh, just like uh, video, uh, podcasts, uh, product and service reviews, and great resources that cover the total Internet spectrum. And it's not only the best thing about it is that it's totally free for you. You can also sign up to post your own blog or RSS feed at no cost as long as you follow the rules. And there's also a paid subscription service for various services from not only myself, but various partners that I've partnered up with and work with uh, in the industry. So let's get down to business for today's show. Hello and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Internet Marketing Pro. And today we have uh, Don Campbell with us. Hello, Don. How are you? Great, Chad. Thanks for having me. Good to be on the show. Well, I appreciate you uh, giving me the, the waiting for me. I was about 10 minutes late to the show. I was trying to get lunch and uh, got caught up uh, uh, on some traffic. It was an accident. But uh, I'm glad we got a chance to, before this holidays uh, weekend to uh, have our chit chat here. And I believe today, we're going to discuss uh, how online interviews can help and hurt your small business. So I'm going to kind of get right into the nitty gritty of the show. Um, um, you know, why are online uh, reviews important for small business today? Well, you know, um, so I, I'm kind of in an interesting spot. I get to work with a lot of small business owners and, and I mean offline businesses too, like thinking about, uh, you know, dentists and chiropractors and you know roof washing how you name it right all different kinds of small businesses and one of the things that that we found is that i mean i think we all know our own con consumer behavior is that when we're trying to find somebody new to do something for us even a service based business or a product we like to read the reviews right i mean even for online ordering like when i buy a book at barnes and noble i have to look up the review on amazon first now I'm just conditioned right before I'll buy the book. <laughs> and so I think people are getting used to, to look into these reviews and it's super important for business owners to kind of think about that and mm -hmm. be proactive around it. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. I think that, I think we used to talk, I mean, I used to say this all the time years ago and it's still prevalent. I think the greatest form of advertising is the word of mouth. There's nothing better than, you know, somebody coming back, you know, say your buddy and he saw a really cool movie and he's like, um, this is a really cool movie or hey, um, like the movie Oblivion. I look like I, I love sci-fi, but everybody says, Chad, just wait till it comes out on video, save your uh, $11 or $10 to go see the movie. I'm like, thanks. I probably will now since everybody yeah. says that collectively. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you can, you know, listen or read the thing what the guy says about the reviews, but I've also noticed that sometimes when the guy, um, 
writes the review. I'm not, I sometimes be opposite of that. Like, I actually like that movie. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, but right. they are important and heavily weighted in today's society, uh, no, no doubt. So, I mean, do, you know, my next question would be, do they have to participate in an online review? I mean, do people have to participate in an online review to, um, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it's funny because that's my biggest, the biggest question I hear from small business owners, surprisingly, is you'll, you know, you start talking to them and say, you know, they'll say, I don't really want to do online reviews because I'm afraid that I might get a bad one. And they don't realize that they don't have a choice, right? I mean, people are out there and people can leave your business or review on Yelp or on Google Plus or on Yahoo or there are many other places that they can leave online reviews. And so, the business owner doesn't really have a choice, and you know, kind of tying back into your first question, um, you you not only do you want to be on top of it in case someone leaves your review, but cultivating these reviews is so important for your business because I mean it increases your search rankings, right, mm-hmm. and it increases the click throughs from you know. So if you do show up on the front page, but then you've got reviews next to yours and the other guy doesn't they're probably going to click through and it also co- increases conversions because people are going to trust you more exactly what you said if people are going to say you know if other people are saying yeah i went here and it was great the food was fantastic that just increases your you know chance that you're going to actually go there or give them a call and make an appointment or, or a reservation so yeah, it's one of those funny things where it, it's a real sort of you know, scary thing for business owners is like the whole on run, it's out of their control, right? And so that, mm-hmm. and therefore it's scary. And that's why it's so important to be proactive and engage with these, with, be proactive with your customers and like ask for these reviews. Yeah, like we do on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? You probably say, hey, leave me a review on iTunes and right on your podcast. Right. And more likely, and, hopefully, we'll get good ones because we're not charging you any money for these podcasts and this information. We're doing this because we have a passion for what we talk about. <laughs> so give us good reviews, please. Yeah, yeah I see you've got a lot of good ones out there now. So I'm working awesome. on it. I think the more you ask, the more you'll actually receive them, like you were just saying. you know, when I, If you don't ask for them, don't expect to get them. It's almost like you have to like mesmerize or... or what is it? Um, what is it when they take the little ticking thing and it goes back and forth like the yeah, hypnotize? That's right, <laughs> hypnotize. It's hypnotic marketing, you know. <laughs> but it's well, uh, a good point, though, that you have to ask, right? Is that a lot? I mean, a lot of businesses recognize that word of mouth referrals, like you said earlier, are important to them, or reviews are important to them, but they don't have any system for asking. For and, and you know if you're providing a good product or a good service or like your podcast, you're providing all this great information and people like it, they're happy to give you a review, right? Because they, you're, they're getting value from what you're doing, and it's okay for you to ask, "Hey, would you mind leaving me a review? It helps me out a lot." And so that's the kind of thing people have to like. You've done. You've kind of make that up as part of your system, as part of it's in my script. How you ask, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. scripted it in the beginning. I think I might even ask people three times in the in the, if you really listen to what I'm saying, and I open the script or I talk about it in my announcements, and then it, by the time I end with my bumper at the end of the program, I've asked you three, four times, you know, and uh, I've realized it does really work, you know, and I'm seeing more and more people picking up and doing reviews. And another thing that I do that it's, I think is I want to add to what you're saying. Not only do you ask for the review, but you need to be gracious, I believe, as a business owner and go back and make sure that you maintain and respond to those reviews when people do it, you know, if you can, because you can't always see where people are doing it. But I tell them, hey, as long as you're on either YouTube or, um, what is it, uh, iTunes or another, another, was it the other one, the other format? I can't remember, but whatever it is, those formats, you know, like Facebook or whatever, those social networks, then I can respond. But don't expect me to find on some small, you know, podcastworld.com, you know, where somehow they picked up my feed and I don't even know that it even is like hosted there that I can yeah. even respond to you because I don't know that it even exists because these shows do propagate the internet even further than where we syndicate them knowingly. And um, that's really great because it travels that much further. So we do the best that we can to maintain what we can and and not only that you know thank people for doing that too as well because you know it does add up to your social clout and it does mean something uh, i believe with the the new way i believe google the direction of google's going is like it seems like the search has changed so much now that it's whatever's fresh and new and right to the point gets like almost priority these days you know for sure 
Yeah, and you know, for for a small like an offline business, it's really important to do that. What you're talking about as well, like you just gave a great example of how you respond to the reviews that people leave for you on your podcast if you can, right? If you know about them, mm-hmm. and same thing for small businesses. I mean, th- these are great opportunities, right? If someone leaves you a review on Yelp or on Google Plus, you can respond to those reviews too, even if they're positive. You know, you can say, "Hey, thanks for the great review." You know, uh, we've really worked hard on this or this. And what's cool is all that stuff, all that text, that's all indexed by Google too. Mm -hmm. So all that review text, this is another way that reviews help you with your ranking. And it shows your customers and it shows prospective customers that you're out there engaged and you're listening to them. And everybody wants to do business with somebody who's out there actively engaged with their customers. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only that, it's almost kind of a, a viral situation because if you do respond and someone has a question they're more likely to engage knowing that you're there to respond than just putting a, a question out there and that's a pie in the sky and you know sometimes you know in some of these communities when they have so much momentum going uh, somebody else is probably answering it for you a lot of the time <laughs> um yep i've seen yep. some crazy things i was on something last night uh, where they used f- i believe it was fire and there was 4400 people on a hangout and um, it was pretty wow. amazing watching this hangout, all these people, you know, dropping texts and stuff. And it was funny. I was playing around dropping uh, affiliate links on there, and the guy got mad for me being spammy. I said, well, the next time you think about being spammy, don't send me 20 messages about today's, uh, pr- you know, this 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 get-together when I never asked <laughs> for it in the first place. So I'm going to take a liberty and, and test some few things on your, <laughs> your landing page <laughs> in this technology, and then I'll let that be. And it was kind of cool because I, I popped it in there and got like 43 hits and uh, two sales off of just trying it. I was like, that's pretty cool. But, you know, huh. I wasn't trying to be – flagrant but at the same time i'm like hey it's a testing there's 4400 people in here i want to see what it does you know and and i was just curious but um i wasn't hurting anybody but anyway and i'm sorry if you're listening to this the person and uh, i did that i won't do it again <laughs> but it's just that kind of i'm just that kind of guy who likes to play and tinker with things and stuff but you know let me ask you that my next question would be how many online reviews does it does a business need and and does it you know does it matter how many you have i mean is more yeah. better than or worse or is there a quality situation? What is that? Well, it's a good question. I think you know what the best way to do that is if you're a certain type of business. Let's say that you're, a, I don't know, just make up. I'm a florist in San Jose, California. Then, and you do that search in Google and see what comes up. What you want to be is just on the high end, right? So if everybody else on average has, you know, ten reviews, if you've got a hundred then that kind of looks a little fishy, right? So it's not like you have to just go for the most reviews possible. That what, what Google is looking for in their algorithm and so, so are the other, you know, the different search engines who figure out how to rank people. They're just looking for a natural review profile. And what that means is just over time, you're accumulating reviews um, nice and easy, right? It's it's not like you've got 100 one day, like you got one one day and 100 the next, then they know something's wrong and they're going to flag you. But if you've got a nice... Like if, if the average number of reviews in your for your industry is eight, you want to have ten, right, or fifteen or twenty, but you don't want to, you don't need to necessarily go and try and stack them all up. Sounds like and, illegal and, backlinking. <laughs> yeah, because people do that, right? They buy reviews just like they buy backlinks, and once Google finds that out, they basically slap them down and give them a penalty. And you don't want to, you know, it might work for a while, but then you just get punished. So. You know, the, the good news, the, the good, the best way to do it is just to get a system like you're talking about with your podcast only for a small business. It might be when someone comes in the office and they're, uh, they have a great visit. You can ask them if, you know, there's some ways you can sort of train your staff to ask for this, for people to leave these reviews. And then over time you build them up. And then when you inevitably get that bad review, you've got 15 or 20 out there and you get one bad one. It's okay because mm-hmm. it's, uh, first of all, you can respond to it. Second of all, you uh it gives the other reviews more credibility but yeah the converse is a is a pain right because if i'm not collecting reviews i'm not doing anything and then i get that bad review now it's the only one out there yeah it's the eyes <laughs> <laughs> like how do i yeah. get rid of that you know <laughs> yeah i was working with this optometrist once with a couple of years ago he i started working with him he didn't have a website he didn't have he was just like i think i should figure this online thing out right and so i started looking around and you know, we looked up his business to kind of see what his footprint was. And so 
you couldn't find this guy anywhere. Even if you searched on his name, the only thing that came up for him was his name um, as a doctor on Yelp. And he had one review, right? He didn't, <laughs> he didn't know about it. It was a negative review. Ooh. So, and that had been out there for eight months. So the, the only way anyone's ever going to find oh, him on the internet, yeah. internet is to see that negative review on Yelp. And when I showed it to him, he said, oh my gosh, I know that guy. He's one of my patients and I totally took care of him. And I said, well, you better call him up because, <laughs> because man, you're, this is not looking good. And he called yeah. the guy up and the guy was like, oh no, we're fine. You took care of me. And he had him change the review. And, and my point is, if you, if you don't, if you're not on top of this, then you, you could be losing business and don't even, and you don't even know it. It right? almost kind of ties right into reputation management then. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I guess my next question would be, you know, well, we are kind of already said this, but it's like, how should, you know, how should businesses get more reviews? But there's a lot of different ways, even though we've only touched a few. I mean, maybe we could dive a little bit deeper into to that question. Yeah. You know what's worked surprisingly well for, I've worked with a bunch of businesses over the over the last four years on this and the the simplest method for this, I mean, the, I'll give you an example of a chiropractor who wasn't on the web and she wasn't, you know, didn't know what to do. And she, she built a... We built her a really basic website, got her ranking in Google Google local searches, and started building reviews. So what she would do is as patients would come in, like for her best patients or patients that would say, wow, this was really a great visit. You really helped me out. Her, um, her receptionist, her office manager was really sharp, and she just kept a clipboard and said, hey, well, thanks for that. You know, online reviews are becoming super important for us. If I were to send you a link, would you mind leaving us an online review? It'll only take you five minutes. And they say, yeah, sure, no problem. Well, can I have your email address? So then she'd write down the name and email address, right? Because they didn't even have the email addresses of their patients. And then at the end of the week, she's got a list of like 20 people and she sends out an email, right? And then and it says, hey, this is, and it's from the doctor. It says, thanks for coming in this week. Uh, while you were here, I asked if you wouldn't mind leaving a review. Here's a direct link to our Google profile. If you would leave us a review out there, I would really appreciate it. So in that way, every week she's adding a couple. Now, everybody you know says they'll do it, but a lot of times they don't get around to it. And they, they intend to. So you kind of have to ask regularly because everyone's busy you know, mm-hmm. and, and they don't always get to it. But in this way, she's like building up a couple of reviews every week. And yeah. next thing you know, she's got all these great reviews out there. And now... I mean, she gets all of her new business from the web, from her website, and a lot of, like every week she's got people coming in. You know what really convinced me to come here and try you out is I saw all those great reviews out there on, the, mm-hmm. on and they on, add uh, up. It's like kind of like bricks. You know, you kind of yeah. start with one, you start stacking, and next thing you know, eventually exactly. you've built a building, and that's your threshold, you know, your platform, and it's it's very solid and and then have a bad ones like you said it's more legitimate and you know what you can't make everybody happy so don't feel bad if you do get some bad reviews here and there um yeah. you know you can't make everybody happy and if you, you you do see a bad review you know do your best as far as trying to um maybe cr- uh, rectify the situation you know um and then maybe the person who might I don't want to say sometimes people just want to shut you right down and there's not really nothing you can do about it. But hey, if you've got more that outweigh the bad, then, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, and that brings up another point as I hear this question a lot of people say, well, what, what do I do if I get a bad review? Right. And the reality is, I've, I mean, you probably know this too. I've worked with a lot of businesses in it. No matter how good you are, at some point, somebody's going to have a bad day and just get ticked off and leave you a bad review. I mean, it just happens to everybody sometimes. I mean, I mean, and so, but the good news is there are a lot of things you can do. Like, if you do get a bad review, um, you can contact that customer. Like, like I gave the example of that optometrist earlier, and he took care of it, and the customer changed their review, right? Um, and, but in a lot of cases, it could be somebody you're not sure who it is, right? You you don't know who left the review. But what's cool is like on Yelp and on Google and on many of the other review services. If you've registered your profile there and somebody leaves you a bad review, you can actually respond to them. Now, Yelp doesn't give you their email address, but through the system, you can leave a response and say, look, I saw your review. I'm really sorry that this happened. And here's, I want to make it up to you. What, you know, maybe you offer them a free dinner or I mean, I, you know, whatever it is for your business, you try and take care of it. And a lot of times people will respond to, they just want to be listened to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that rectifies, and they'll go and change the review if you take care of them. And sometimes you can turn 
a bad review into a chance to get a customer for life, right? Is the customer knows you're listening and you care. I've seen this happen over and over again. Now, if you can't get it resolved with the customer, you can still leave uh, a, like a public response as a business owner. So on Yelp, for example, or on Google, if someone leaves you a bad review, you try to connect with them and re- solve this, resolve the situation and they're just too angry or you know, sometimes you'll have competitors doing this, right? Yeah. People that are just kind of being wicked. Um, but you can leave a response there that's publicly available and you, and that gives, allows you to tell your side of the story. And it shows if you do it right, it shows people that, Hey, th- this guy's got one bad review and 10 good ones. And here on the bad review, he tried to resolve it with the person and he's actually listening and responding. I'm like, that's fine. I get it. Right. But what you don't want to be is in a situation where you've got, three or four bad reviews out there and one good review and you haven't responded to anything because people are like, okay, just move on. I'll go to the next one. Right. Yeah. Engaging them is, is definitely important, whether it's positive or negative. Yep. No cloud. It's just reputation management, as they say. And, exactly. Yeah, it is. And maintain it. So, you know, like, like we were talking and touching about it a little bit, you know, earlier in this program here, you know, I've seen services that allow you to purchase, you know, online reviews. You know, I, you know, should I use those? Because I would think that they would help some in some cases, but I think it sort of comes down to maybe from what you were saying, maybe the amount of way how much I throttle it. Maybe like like you said, maybe I get buy like five or ten a week instead of trying to buy one thousand and have it literally overnight. Um, what's your take? Well, you know, um, it's very much like the link situation with it for people who know how Google ranks websites, right? If you had to boil that down to the simplest level, Google, Google looks at, hey, how many other reputable websites are linking to this website and, you know, that are on topic for it. So if I do a search for something, they want to know how many other websites. So, and so a lot of times those Google know their algorithm is really smart and it figures out like how, what that those link profiles look like. And so then people go off and say, I know I'll buy a bunch of links and then I'll shoot up to the top of the rankings. And Google is really, really smart about knocking that stuff down. And with the Panda and Penguin updates over the last couple of years, you've seen businesses basically get put out of business because they were relying on a bunch of junky links, right? So same thing with reviews. If you go on buy reviews, Google um, and Yelp and all these guys have what they call filters that will filter these reviews out and they're really, really, the algorithms are super smart. And if you do it enough, they'll actually penalize you and you'll get, you're not going to rank. So it's just, to, in my opinion, it is not worth it. Like don't buy reviews. Don't try to game the system. Just build a business, you know, do engage with your customers so that, that they naturally will leave you and ask them. Like you're, like you, the great example of your podcast, you know, you're asking people politely, you're asking um, on a regular basis and people are going to leave your reviews because you're de- delivering value. And so that's what the, the business needs to think about, you know, is don't, don't worry about buying reviews. Just do a good job with your customers and ask them to help you and they'll leave you the reviews and you'll be set. And those, you know, those algorithms, these have got teams of people like Google has a web spam team, like a whole bunch of people that just sit around all day trying to figure out who's trying to game their system and their algorithms. And th- these are smart people. <laughs> so they know what's going on out there. And you don't want to get caught on the wrong end of that. That's why so many businesses got hammered with these Panda mm-hmm. and Penguin updates for the Google algorithms. When you let me ask you this, um, when, when we're talking about the reviews here, like I have to admit that I was well, I was tipped off of this um, a couple months ago about, and yes, I got plenty. I'm not trying to say all my reviews are, are all fake or anything. In fact, I'd say 95, 99 percent of them are real, but there are a few that I paid for as an experiment. Um, okay. Once again, it was one of those things, and I, what, what the review that I'm actually looking for, like that I was, you know, as a podcaster, is for instance, it really helps to get weighted in, say, um, say a private platform like iTunes, or it's like some people are on SoundCloud, or all their different right. types of private platforms. How would that relate to Google or what you're saying right now in that matter? Because is it relative, or I mean, in that case, I'm thinking like. What does Google really even care? Because they're not really ranking my podcast, but it does help when someone lands on my, say, my podcast page on, on iTunes and sees that you know right now I'm sitting at maybe eighteen, nineteen reviews. I wish I had a couple hundred, um, yeah. but I did buy one or two of those uh, 
but it's I did an exchange where I was like I was on a different platform where they'll do reviews and I say if you do reviews I'm like trading some kind of virtual currency for it in exchange. Um, and people will do that, but uh, it doesn't happen very quickly. Or I realize it didn't really work. But um, would that affect me? Well, that's people? a really good question. So there's two things going on here, right? One is when we talk about the small business owner, reviews that are left for you on Yelp or on Google Plus or on Yahoo, mm -hmm. those do factor in on your search rankings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, so. so that's why I'm talking about it from the Google perspective. But even within the private platform, let's just, just say Yelp for a minute, right? If you go try to buy reviews or you get people to review you on Yelp, Yelp itself has the algorithm that says, hey, I think this is a fake review. It looks at all kinds of things. It looks at things like, hey, does this person who left the review have a profile picture? How many other reviews have they left, right? Were they all – like you'll see some reviews. You'll see that they – you can – like it's really interesting. You can go into a review profile and see this review and you click through to the person. You see that they left a review for a business in New York City, one in Atlanta, and one in Portland, Oregon on the same day. You're like, okay. I don't think he was really at all those places, right? <laughs> so, I mean, they look at all these kinds of things and they go, okay, this is a fake review and they filter it out. And if you get enough of those, then they – they can do other things like maybe your business doesn't show up where it should within Yelp searches. So there's two factors here, right? Like in the case of iTunes, like you said, you got a couple of reviews on there. Now it's probably not affecting any Google rankings. I don't think Google, I don't think we don't know, but it, the algorithm probably is not looking at, um, it's probably not looking at I, the number of iTunes reviews to decide where to rank the internet marketing pro podcast within a Google search. But iTunes probably has something. So if you mm -hmm. if you had all of a sudden today you had 18 and then tomorrow you had 105 reviews, there's probably something going on within iTunes where they're going to look at that and say, hmm, you know, how did that happen? Maybe not. So it it depends. I mean, you're not doing anything crazy here where you're you've got right, 500 yeah. reviews and people are going that looks fishy, right? Exactly. So it's it's it totally depends on on the situation here. I think. But it, it can affect you. It just depends on the platform. But you know, people like yourself and my, me who are kind of, you know, the entrepreneurial mind, we're the kind of tinkers, you know. And when you're trying to find something or research something, sometimes you go a little on the dark side or the gray area because of the fact that you kind of want to see what the limits and the boundaries are as far as pushing the limits and the boundaries because you always want to try to get the most optimization and the best results that you can and then you know, know how far you can actually push it. Sometimes you go overboard. I mean, I know one time I did that. Um, I wanted to test that. Somebody said you could buy views on YouTube, and I was like, okay. And I, and I knew that I probably wouldn't get away with it, but I, I said let's try it anyway. So I was buying views on YouTube, and it was mon I had the monetization turned on, and yeah, it was cranking money up <laughs> like really yeah. fast. But uh, and it would spike, and then, of course, you know, like you said, YouTube figured it out. And I thought I was really going to get away with it for a second. I was like, right there, to like the day that they issue the check, and, and I was always getting my checks on time. And I was like, wow, tomorrow they still haven't cut it down, or they counter anything. And I wonder right. if they're going to cut the check. Now they they just cut off the monetization at the last minute, and I was like, bummer. But mm. uh, yeah, uh, you know, even when you buy, like, you know, when you talk about reviews, there also you can buy views and things like that. And you got to be careful about. It. I don't believe that those are necessarily. You don't want to do it if there's obviously if you're somebody's paying you or monetizing because it would be definitely dishonest. But um, I guess you could. I learned a lot in that experience w about YouTube and how they count and how the how the system works and a lot of things that uh, I didn't didn't know beforehand. And that always that helps me sometimes when I push the limit like that to learn and d dig in and get deep, you know, as far as the depth of how something works. But I realized, too, a lot of those views would only last for like three seconds, and they were coming from all these little countries around Russia. So I was thinking, they're useless to me. No one's really watching my content. They're not really anything other than giving me an uptick. And I don't think that that even is going to weigh with YouTube. But in some fashion, I thought it would weigh. I did it more recently where I wasn't monetizing uh, one of these podcast shows, and I paid for uh, a small amount of of uh, views to come in because I wanted to see whether or not that would cause it to go viral faster and give it some lift, which it did actually. Um, I did find that I got twice as many 
organic views because of those views the way they stacked. And because there was enough people that were already watching my show that the law of averages, maybe the, the amount of retention went down, but I still ended up picking up a lot more maybe listeners to the show because of it, because it was showing up and ranking in within um, YouTube. So, yeah. you know, like you got to play around. I mean, I wouldn't say that you go around and do it on your business, but if you have like, say, you know, you're kind of a tinker like me and you want to see, you know, how things work or how far you can really push it and what the boundaries are, um, you know, those are just, I'm just sharing some of the dark stuff that I've worked on and do every now and then um, just to see those types of things and get that kind of information. I don't know if you do anything like that or anything you could share on that, but. I well, I mean, found- experimenting, you know, you're experimenting and that's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's, right. I think you've got quality content out there on your podcast and on YouTube. And so you're just trying to figure out how the system works. I think what I've seen, you probably know people that got really, really, uh, their business was cut in half or in, or, or worse mm-hmm. when some of these Google algorithm updates happened, right? So oh, yeah. they got into the habit of buying links and maybe not producing the quality content and they're so they artificially were getting boosted up maybe with affiliate revenue or ad revenue. And then Google comes through and says, look, you bought all these, li- I, you bought all these links from known link farms and I've just devalued them. Your business was cut in half. So, you know, you pay the price. I mean, if you, if you build in certain ways and you do it systematically and that's all you're doing, at some point it's going to catch up to you. It might work for a while, but that's different. I think than you know, experimenting and figuring out how the system works. But all the while, you're producing really good quality content. People are getting introduced to your podcast or your YouTube channel, and they're saying, okay, this is good stuff. I'm learning from it. They're going to stick around. They're going to keep coming back, or they're going to get on your email list. I mean, I think that's really what <clears> – <throat> that's kind of how I look at it. It's like how do you – you know, it, I, I, some people are going to experiment and, and try different things, and – um it's everybody draws the line in a different spot. I just, I just don't want to wake up one morning and have my business chopped in half. So that's why I try to, you know, I'll, I'll do some experiments, but then I, I try to play it, play by the rules once I understand what they are, just so that I don't get, get that nasty surprise down the road. <laughs> yeah, I heard, I've talked to a lot of people that were totally affected by that one way or another, and um, it's a lot. It's funny. A lot of them had to kind of come out and uh, are all saying the same, pretty much the same thing. Like I've got a kind of reinvent myself because I was making all my income and stuff and it was a good ride, but it's over. And I'm like, wow, I can't imagine what that must be like. Well, yeah, you're producing like three podcasts a week, right? And interviewing all these people and do it. So it's different. What, what I think ticks me off is people that aren't really adding a lot of value, but they're just playing games to get links and sell ads. And, and then they get mad when Google changes something and think Google's evil, it's like, no, it's not. You were, you weren't putting anything of quality out there. <laughs> so I don't feel bad for those people. Right. Right. But you know, if, if you, um, if you're out there producing and working uh, and producing great stuff, then you know, you're that, that's not going to happen to you because I agree. You know, Google, I, I, Google I don't want, right? yeah, yeah. I don't I do, do that kind of stuff. You know, I don't really right. put out the garbage or do any of that black hat stuff. Now I know I just shared with you that I did the views and all and the review yeah. thing, but it's only because of my podcast. Like I'm just pushing this, the limits of, you know, how can I build a bigger customer base faster? Or is there, is there any little tiny shortcuts or any kind of little, innuendo things that that people that are off the beaten path that could be like a golden nugget that I discovered because I'll tell you what if you don't have that kind of mindset then don't expect to find anything that's going to be like eureka um, yeah there's no be- silver bullet right <laughs> right yeah. and, and and I tell you to all the years that I've been in internet marketing for two over two decades you know it's it's these types of things where you push the limits when you find sometimes the greatest thing and and sometimes you might be just barely pushing the cutting edge there but as long as it's legal and it's good stuff, I mean, that's what puts you over the top. I mean, I'll give you an example. When I put out my, um, you know, I've brought this up in many shows. Um, a lot of you have listening to my shows now. You know, it's like what, I'm in the 40s now. And I started off on the internet, you know, with an email marketing platform. And in the beginning, everybody was calling me a spammer. I'm like, wait a second. I'm not a spammer. People are giving me their addresses. I just happened to figure out a way and build a platform that can send everybody at the same time, the same message. That's not what I consider spamming if they wanted the message. And then number two is I wasn't so much doing that anymore once I got really big in that business, had tens of thousands of customers. 
I was basically just providing the service, but yet they say, well, that's like creating the gun, <laughs> you know, but I didn't oh. pull the trigger, you know, but the thing is, is like you're enabling them. So, I mean, people will look at things like just like reviews, you know, positive or negative in many different ways and everybody has a different opinion and that's fine, but you know, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you just got to push the limits. And if you feel uncomfortable, like I guess asking for reviews, don't feel uncomfortable because it's going to be a norm in the future, if not already now, that you're going to see more and more and more people rely on the fact and asking for reviews um, or feedback on every transaction possible. Yeah. And you've earned that too. And in, in a lot of cases, if you're providing great service and, and you're helping out, you believe in what you do. Then usually people don't mind, right? They're they're not going to mind referring you to a friend or leaving you a review because they like what you're doing. So, I mean, but I know I have a hard time with that too. I, I I'm not a natural born salesperson, so it's hard for me to ask for those kind of things. But I find when I do, people are happy to do it, right? They're like, yeah, gosh, I've learned a bunch from you. I don't mind at all. I'd love to help you out. And yeah. that's how the world goes around, right? That kind of stuff is what. How we help each other succeed. I think it all comes down to timing too, because I've done this before where, you know, I might have a guest on the, on the show and I'll hit them up like after I do the show and say, Hey, do you mind, you know, giving me a review to help the show? And it's just one of those courtesy things, you know, that, you know, when somebody's scratching your back and you, know, you want to kind of scratch, I mean, what, what, how long does a review take? Like two minutes, big deal. And, right. um, and I think it does come down to timing because sometimes, you know, I've done ask people for that and they might not give it right away. I know they're busy. And then I might a week will go by and I'll be like, "Man, I wonder why they won't they didn't give me a review that like yet." Yeah. I'll, I'll hit them up again nicely, but I'll have to have something that I kind of like I kind of like maybe relate to something else and they go, "Oh, by the way." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. You know, cuz you don't want to be a pest, you know, but you know, yeah. be be a little bit, you know, um I'd say Rico Suave in the situation. If you someone doesn't respond and give you the review that you want right away, you know maybe you can shroud it behind some other subject matter and then do the beat by the way thing situation and get around that uncomfort zone of feeling like you might be bugging someone. I, I guess that could be a a good tip, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for sure. Right, From right. my experience, do you have any other tips that you want to share with us? Because we're getting kind of at the uh, the bottom of the uh, the show here. You know, I think that's it. I mean, just be proactive about your re reviews and, and like, first of all, monitor so that you know what's being said about you online. You don't want to get surprised. So make sure that you're, that you are watching for this stuff. And second is be proactive about asking your best customers for re reviews. And like you said, it's okay to ask more than once as long as you're doing it politely and you're adding value. Um, ask for those and then, and then follow up when people leave you good or bad reviews. Make sure that you engage in that conversation. And um, that that's just such a great opportunity. I mean, I've seen so many cases where people take a negative review and turn it into an opportunity to show great customer service. And they end up getting a customer for life and a showcase that a lot of other people are seeing online and, and how they handled it. And so you can really make this a powerful way to grow your business if you do it right. And it's probably one of the most important things you can do online for, for the business. So I appreciate the chance to talk about it today, Chad. Well, we appreciate having you on here. This was, I think, uh, I really like the, the subject matter of the show. It's very different, um, fresh. I really haven't seen too much, too many things out there really covering this topic. I think it really does need to be, um, maybe addressed even more in the, in the public, um, about the reputation and reviews. And, and I know that you have a website, uh, expand and that's the number two web.com, uh, where you have tools and training to get your business online and you, uh, can bring people through, I guess, a step by step approach, uh, of getting their business online and how to go about doing it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Expand to web.com and we've got training for small business owners and consultants that help small business owners. We've got software and we just launched a tool recently that helps with your online reviews. I hope you don't mind me mentioning no, no, go this, ahead. but it basically helps you automate that process. It's called get five stars. So get five stars.com and, um, basically helps you kind of collect the emails you're customers and ask them for reviews and monitor your online reviews and all the stuff we talked about so awesome is there anything else that you're involved with that you you do another course don't you with the that's right so i'm part of the school of internet marketing 
with uh, James Martel and several other instructors. And really excited because that's getting off the ground now. And uh, we've got a lot of great courses in there for small business owners that cover this kind of stuff, covers building your website, how to manage your social media, how to do affiliate marketing. There's just a lot of a lot of great content from a lot of great instructors there. So I'm super excited about that initiative too. I'm super excited too. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> I get to interview just about everybody that wants to be yeah, interviewed in the crew. All the instructors. And then, like but... I said, I was asked to become an instructor. I just got to figure out where my niche uh, lies with everybody else so that we don't overlap uh, content. But I'm sure I've got to, I've looked at some of the content and I've found a couple little errors that I wouldn't mind uh, digging into uh, myself uh, that no one's covering. But I really appreciate you being on the show, Don. It's been a, a real pleasure. And uh, I hope to have you uh, back maybe uh, sometime in the fall. I'm not sure. Are you going to Affiliate Summit in August? Uh, no, I'll probably go to the one in uh, in January on okay. the West Coast. But yeah. Well, maybe I'll get a chance to sit down and have a drink and have another interview there. Great. That'd be awesome. awesome. Thanks, Chad. Well, I appreciate it, and that's about it for this show, everyone. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll be back in uh, next week with a new show.